Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm a Cloudy Sheep and today we will be playing Command Modern Air and Naval Operations over here. Command um, is maybe one of the visually most unattractive games of all times, um, but it's certainly one of the most realistic war games um, that, that there's around. Um, as you can see the interface sometimes looks a bit cluttered um, and, and we'll see that in, in a in a second there. Um, the scenario that I would like to play with you guys is one of the standalone scenarios over here, Canary Cage. I haven't yet played it, um, but I do... Um, I, I've, I've loaded it up and to just have a look around. Um, but basically the story here is that it's situated... the game plays out in, in 2005. It's a... we will be playing Spain and the backstory here is basically uh, that Northern Africa basically united um, under the Northern African Islamic League here, including Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, and uh, the and Morocco. Now, there's been a bit of a di dispute basically, and and you can hold the uh, video to if you want to read all this. Um, but basically, they uh, hosted a diversion against Ceuta and Melania, so the, these are Spanish cities in in North Africa. Um, and while that had been going on. Um, they basically uh, got hold of, sent out an amphibious force and got hold of the Canary Islands. And now we will be trying to um, get the Canary Island back. So um, let's load up the scenario, Should, shouldn't take too long here. And uh, here are our mission orders. So again, we will be playing Spain. Um, you can see the islands over here already, but uh, we'll zoom in into that for in a second. Um, but yeah, so. We know that there's um, a second and um, wave of invasion um, coming from NAIL, so from the Northern African African Islamic League. Um, they will be basically reinforcing the, their troops on the Canary Island, three to four troop transports and escorts. So we'll try to intercept that. Um, we know there will be some submarines in the area, but of course we don't know where, um, and we do know that. Um, the airports in Gran Canaria and Tenerife are, are used by NAIL as well. That's that's pretty bad. Um, we will have the group Delta, which is um, our Marines, and they'll um, basically try to, to land that at uh, Tenerife. And trying to defend on the way. Uh, we also have group Alpha, uh, which is a bit more um, a stronger fighting force on, on, on the sea. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we will be trying to get um, that going. Um, let's enter the scenario over here and, and have a look around. So as you can see, again, the uh, uh, the interface looks a bit cluttered, but don't worry, I'll uh, basically lead you through it. But um, So we'll start by just showing off our own uh, forces here um, and, and talking a bit about the interface. Right now, uh, I will just start the game here, it, it's on pause, um, and I'll just start it for just one second, just briefly. Stop, and there we go. And that is uh, so we can see the at least the fixed installations of the enemy here in, in red. So, um, as you can tell, um, the enemy is red, of course, uh, very appropriately so, and we are sort of in this light blue um, cyan shade over here. This is the main uh, window over here, um, and you can see that there is this is Spain, so our homeland. Um, this is basically the enemy territory, but we'll only be worrying pretty much about this um, approach over here. You can see that this is Morocco. Morocco has um, a couple of things over here, and, and these are the Canary Islands, uh, which again they occupied. Um, let's talk a bit about the uh, units that you can see over here. So this is basically um, the way I think NATO displays these things. So you have basically three kinds of, of general symbols, either ones that are sort of a lower half, um, then there are some full circles, as you can see over here, uh, and soon there will be some, some sort of upper halves. Um, the distinction here is that these are submarines. So basically, you can you can think about this as as being um, yeah 
be below the C, sort of, I think that's the idea here. And the full circles are uh, naval units, so just surface um, naval units. Let's let's click one here, as you can see, uh, basically a ship. And the upper uh, sort of thing will be um, airplanes, so sort of above the ground. You can also see that um, here we already uh, spotted something. So again, the Sion thing, and, and it's for additional clarity, it's, it's sort of a circle. That is always friendly. So we have friendly lower half, so friendly half circle. Friendly upper half will be a plane of our own. This here, um, Goblin 222, um, is an unidentified contact. So it's it's yellow. We don't know whether it's it's uh, hostile or neutral. Um, we basically don't know. And it's uh, also a submarine. So you can you can tell by the um, by the fact that it's only the lower half, also by the name, if, if you're familiar with that. Um, and so basically this has been already a contact that, that has been established sort of in this area. Um, you can see that there are a lot of circles going around uh, our units and they obviously uh, denote different things, um, which ones you can see uh, over here. So basically um, it's sensors, the white, do we have any white um, circle? I don't think we do right now. Um, yellow, greenish. So green, you can already see this is sort of the the way the range at which we would sort of expect at least uh, to see uh, enemy underwater threats or even any underwater threat. And you can see that over here, um, this guy um, actually this is within the range, so we know it's uh, so this is why we could um, find it at all. Uh, you can also see this this sort of band over here, uh, which is similar, and I don't think it's shown over here. Um, but uh, we'll be talking about uh, how underwater detection works uh, a bit more later on, but, but that is important in that context as well. You can also see the um, range of our weapons, um, sort of the surface weapons, so that's against um, surface naval threats. Um, and the underwater weapons, land weapons over here. Um, so I think basically this this should be all this circle. Um, here it's it's basically um, the this should be really a red and and dark green um, thing. And I think they overlay each other here. There you might see it a bit. Um, but yeah, that's basically because of course the submarine over here ba basically mostly has torpedoes. Um, and they have uh, the same range whether they are underground or overground. Um, we can also have a look over here. So you, here you can see that it, it's a lot more mishmash. Um, but for a second there, I think we can actually um, group everything to together. So um, now um, this basically says this is Group Alpha. It consists of, of several chips. You can see here it's all, all in all eight chips, which we will be talking about in a bit more detail later on. Um, and they have these sort of combined ranges. And now you might see it a bit more clearly. So um, this is the range against surface threats um, and, and what weapon that will correspond to, we will talk about later. This is the range of the underwater sensors. This is the range of the air weapons. And, and this is sort of the more close in land weapon, underwater weapon range over here. Um, there will be a lot, of, a lot more things uh, coming in later on. Uh, you can also see that it's not always very, very circular. So this uh, submarine over here, for example, is not very apt at um, detecting stuff um, towards sort of the direction it's not traveling. The orange, uh, the the gray uh, areas here are basically uh, what uh, what direction the unit is traveling in. So you can al also see that in in this sort of blimp over here. This is the S63 Mosa Polar, so that's basically the name of the unit. It's traveling um, in a direction of, of 47 degrees, so that's basically its bearing over here. It's traveling in, in, in that direction um, at no speed at the moment, and it's at a depth of uh, 67 feet, so that's basically what, just like 20 meters. Um, I think that's uh, periscope depth. Um, we should be also able to see similar things when we when we click on our units here. So you can see this this is the entire group delta, which 
again has uh, several units. Um, it's traveling in a direction of 180, 240 degrees, so down there, which you can see here, um, at a speed of 11 knots. If we do switch the group view back on, uh, you can see that that, of course, uh, corresponds to a lot of single units with all sort of weird patterns um, going on here, which we don't necessarily need to care about that much um, at all. You can also see that there are a couple of, um, of fixed structures. Um, let's go to group view. Um, this is basically, well, you don't know that, but it's, it's basically um, an airfield. So Marrakesh Manuri Airport um, and some military airport over here. I won't even try to pronounce that. Um, we also have a couple of airports of our own. Um, there is Jerenio, close to Madrid over here, uh, which I think is a, is a military airport as well. Uh, Mojon uh, and Rota, Rota, I don't know. Uh, you can also see that there are a couple of other symbols uh, mixed in here. This one, for example. Um, this is a radar installation, um, and we can have a look at actually the details over here. So let's uh, drop into the thing over here and, and have a look at the detailed windows that. Um, that's a nice picture, but that is not quite what is important. What is important is that over here um, you have a good in, uh, number of information about the unit. So it's mobile. It, it's not. It's very flimsy. It doesn't have any damage points, um, but it does. It is able. Um, it has a, it has a sensor, um, a Mark One eyeball, so just people looking at a max range of not, uh, 50 miles, um, which is not that important. What is important over here is the radar installation. This is a technical name, um, and it's a air search 3D long range radar, which pretty has pretty relatively new technology I would say. It's able to do um, pr to provide air search patterns. It has range information, altitude information, speed information, heading information. So all that's pretty good actually. Um, and this is a radar that we definitely want to operate. It's currently not turned on, which you can see in this um, sensor thing over here. So this unit just obeys the MCON, so emissions controls of um, of our entire site, and, and that's not quite what we want. Um, what we want is for this to be active, so we disable this, and then uh, here have the information that it's not active currently, because it can only be active, it's an active ser air search radar. So we will turn it on, and you can see that now we have this white circle over here, and that is indeed um, air sensors. We can also just unclick it and, and see that it indeed disappeared. So that radar alone uh, gives us pretty good information about this uh, northern uh, third of Morocco over here and, and a bit of the operational area. Um, of course, now that we turned it on, it's much more visible to the enemy as well, so it might be attacked, but then again it's so close to our, our bases over there that um, I think that will be fine. We also have a couple of units over here. Um, so this is a SAM, um, so surface-to-air mis missile unit um, of NASAMS 2. Um, just <coughs> we will be talking about weapons um, quite a bit more later on, but this is um, a NASAM 2. It has a, it stores six missiles, which I think uh, corresponds to this pattern over here, yeah. um, and it can launch them at an interval of two. Um, again, six of, of these MRM missiles. It's a guided weapon, can target all sort of um, airborne threats um, with a relatively good speed, um, not that great a range, so about 60 miles, um, and has a 23 kilogram um, warhead over here. So this is okay, I would say. Um, the data links aren't, aren't quite as important either. Um, the signatures, um, again, also not that important for this guy. Um, more importantly, maybe this also uh, has a radar, um, which has a lower range, um, but which will probably need to illuminate the um, targets um, for our weapons over here. But right now, um, you can see sort of this is the engagement range. Um, 
it basically covers our airfield over here, which I think will be a fine idea. Uh, we also have another sensor over here, the NASEMS, um, which has a bit more complex um, detection. So this is basically not a radar, it's, it's more of an optical thing. So um, yeah, it, it has infrared visual tracking information uh, by TV cameras and, and so on. So this is pretty, pretty modern, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how, how actual um, relevant it would be in our sort of uh, setting over here. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a pretty good overview of our ground units, um, which I don't think we will um, be talking about that much later on. So let's have a look at our ships over here. Uh, we have this group Delta, uh, which includes our um, landing ships, so our marine ships. These really aren't, aren't that um, important for our combat. It's just important that we get them to the target area. Uh, as you can see, it's an amphibious ship. Um, it doesn't have that many weapons, which you can see over here. Um, just a couple of 20 millimeter guns um, and some chaffs and flares. So these are basically decoys um, when when we get attacked. So again, this is this is not much of a gun to be honest. It it can target um, a couple of things, but it has has a very pitiful range and and it's not that. Um, that particularly useful to be honest. <clears throat> so these are basically the guys that, that we just need to get there. So the L51, L52, um, we have another landing ship tank over here which also is amphibious but uh, again which has a couple of more weapons, um, basically a machine gun, some some phalanx which is good. So these are close-in weapon systems. They can target missiles um, as well. Um, so when, when we get attacked by missiles uh, like harpoons, uh, they would be defending us, or this one phalanx would be defending us, and it actually has a couple of 76mm uh, guns, uh, which at least have some range, um, 6 nautical miles. It's 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 okay, it, it won't fire, win the battle for us. Uh, six, 6 nautical miles is basically no fighting range. More importantly, um, we do have these guys over here. So um, these F-32, F-70 F type of units, these are typically um, um, frigates, which you can see on, to some extent, not the most modern. Um, I'm not sure whether it says anywhere what year this was built in, but yeah, you can see that the technology here is basically 19... 60 some modern aspects of these have obviously been um, been updated we have some jammers over here um, yeah but it's 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 I think it's the old um, Perry class uh, from from the US uh, which might be adapted to Spanish use the these units um, tend to have a bit of a more mixed profile you can see it has um, some space for helicopters down here um, and, and that you can see over here as well. Uh, we do have a hangar for, for some aircraft um, and a landing pad. Uh, we do also have some more magazines and some more weapons. Um, again, 20 millimeters, these guys we sort of talked about. Um, these guys, I think, are just anti-missile missiles, so missiles that um, get fired at incoming missiles. Um, but this has, more importantly, the um, the most important weapon of the game would be typically harpoons. So these are long-range anti-ship missiles, um, and here again, RIMS, so anti-anti-missile missiles, and some chaps, or, or basically decoys, and some torpedoes over here. So Mark 46 torpedoes over here. Uh, which should target submarines only. It's a, it's a light torpedo, um, has a pretty good speed, not that great a range, but yeah. Um, so this is a more overall balance sort of uh, sort of sort of ship. Um, it should also have some more sensors. Yeah, uh, yeah. As you can see, it has uh, actually quite a lot of sensors um, on that that are situated on it: radar, TV cameras. Um, of course, people just looking. Um, the CIW, uh, CWIS, 
So that's the close in weapon systems uh, for, for defense, uh, which I think, yeah. So this is basically, for example, the, the search radar um, for this sort of weapon over here. Right now, these sensors should be off, so um, radar is not on for the group, um, which I prefer because radar emissions would give us away pretty much. As, as soon as they have something in the air that can detect us, um, we would be able to, to um, intercept or, or be, they would pretty much be able to see us. Um, I think these guys might be a bit more modern. Yeah, you can you can already see that they are more modern. Uh, again, some helicopter pads, as we can see down here. Um, some quite a couple of weapons. Um, do we have a, a bit of a bigger gun? Some 20 millimeters. Some um, some um, torpedo rails. Um, again, some anti-air. Some and this is now a bit more important. Some harpoons. So this guy can actually shoot harpoons and, and launch them and, and at the enemy. And again, some um, anti-missile missiles. But no close-in weapon system other than that, or is it? Ship, and some mobile, no. So this this uh, gun over here, this 20 millimeter gun, can we see it actually anywhere? Probably, I don't know. Um, yeah, this guy can actually not shoot at, um, at missiles. Uh, we can only shoot Missiles at missiles, uh, which is good because we um, these are very very um, likely to intercept uh, incoming missiles compared to the uh, guns, but uh, we are much more limited in the amount of stuff that we can defend against. Yeah, but but that's pretty much uh, this ship. I think it also should have pretty good um, coverage. So yeah, uh, pretty good, pretty good. Um, sensors, some of them are also passive. I think these might actually be passive. Um, so we we will uh, be able to, to see enemies without um, active emissions from our side. Our submarines over here. Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, we actually have this group Alpha, uh, which is more of a combat group. Again, frigates, I won't go through all of them. They'll probably be very similar. I expect they, these guys to be somewhat in the middle. Um, so maybe, yeah, oh well, we'll see. Um, and again, somewhat similar weapon profile, really. Um, some more harpoons, these will be cer certainly very useful. Um, more frigates, more frigates, more frigates, and uh, somewhat importantly, this guy, which is not an aircraft carrier, even though it looks a lot um, like an aircraft carrier, and it does indeed um, Oh no, it's actually classified as an aircraft carrier. Um, but I think it's it's actually in the Spanish Navy. It's it's called an amphibious landing ship or an amphibious supporter. Um, and you can see that it it doesn't have that many weapons itself. Um, mostly really defense stuff, um, but it does um, have a lot of uh, magazines for. Um, of course, where 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 can we see it? No, nope, don't see it. Oh yeah, aircraft facilities. So um, yeah, there's there's quite a lot of stuff going on uh, over here. It does have an air, a bit basically an air um, craft assortment. We can also look at the aircrafts, which I think we'll be uh, doing later on. Um, so we'll now jump into the submarines over here. Um, we have a couple, um, and they are currently at um, periscope depth, um, as we can see. Could see over here. Um, I, I think we, we can also demonstrate that over here in the throttle and altitude settings. Um, so you have a lot of um, depth settings and speed settings over here. Um, more on that certainly later. But for now let's look at the submarine itself. Uh, basically very small um, sort of attack uh, craft submarines, um, probably diesel driven. Um, yeah, dies diesel driven um, or electric if it's submerged. Um, you, this this guy uh, this information down here tells you uh, how easy it is to spot, um, and uh, what, so, sorry, this actually tells you uh, about the consumption of fuel um, in in diesel mode and in electric mode, um, but that should probably not be a problem. Um, and this uh, tells you about how likely you are to spot it. So on passive sonar, for example, and this is sort of the emission that it would give. Um, in certain frequency bands and, and so on. And that of course is very important when you look at the 
senses, so again these always correspond to each other, but you don't necessarily need to dive into these uh, details that 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 much. Um, but for example, one thing that that you can see down here is that, for example, on active sonar, sen so when this guy is pinged, um, the front and the rear um, is pretty small. But if you look at it from the side, it will light up pretty pretty well. And again, similar if you, if you look at it, just if it's um, on the surface, uh, it's much easier to spot um, from the side than from the rear or front. The these guys um, should pretty much have only torpedoes, uh, which they can fire at all sort of things, um, which I guess is okay, uh, although the range is, is sort of uh, very, very small. And you can also see uh, that these torpedoes will be uh, wire-guided, um, which which is of course uh, very nice, so they can a bit more actively control. Um, they should also have air surface uh, search so passive uh, radar over here which is very very important um, because apart from all the sonar uh, it's it's very nice that these guys when they are at periscope depths uh, that they will be able to uh, spot um, aircraft that, that are in the area and, and on active emissions. I think these guys are all very sort of similar in, in their profile. Um, so all hunter killer submarines, all diesel driven, all more or less modern. Um, so this also has um, decoys, which is of course very nice. Um, it's it's also somewhat smaller on, on the profile, which also is very nice, um, but it's not a drastically different ship. Um, although you can see it's a bit more modern, maybe. Um, and these, I think, should be very similar. Yeah, they're actually the same um, sort of ship class over here. In in terms of our enemy, um, they have a couple of airports over here, some surface-to-air missiles, um, so I think these are Soviet um, weapons over here. Oh yeah, SA-7s, um, so that uh, certainly we'll have to keep in mind, but it's it's not that like they have drastic range. Although they could potentially, and uh, this is this dotted line, they could potentially spot aircraft in, in this entire area. Again, some more airports over here, um, a lot air, a lot of airports on our side, um, and we can see that because this is, you know, uh, modern naval and air operations, uh, that we also can have a look at the aircraft that are stationed over here, but I think that we'll have to wait until next episode. So, thank you for watching this very brief introduction of, of the um, overall uh, scenario. We will, uh, in the next... Uh, episode talk a bit about the aircraft that we have and then formulate our overall strategies of getting these guys down here um, and defending against all sort of threats emitting from these airfields and, and some of the surface area uh, threats uh, down here. So, see you guys next time.